here with uh, with the infamous Lucas Saul, um, and Luke is probably one of the most interesting people that I know, hands down. <laughs> I mean, what what was your day like today, Luke? <laughs> well, I did get some rock climbing in today, so that's a nice, good start. But cool, uh, lucky dad's first day of the season for me. And you went up to Deer's Leap. Deer's Leap. Killington is cool. best. Nice. Some of the nicest cliff. Uh, that I like just because I know it well. Awesome, awesome. Beautiful spot. So Luke uh, is a physicist, among other things, uh, a dad, um, a brother, grew up in Pomfret, and uh, currently is the inventor of a cryptocurrency. Is that right? right. So um, when did you get involved with cryptocurrency? It's a good question. Yeah, everyone asked that, um, and. It was, I was in Switzerland working at the, at the time at a laboratory there on a, on a NASA project. Nice. The Stellar Boundary Explorer. Wow. Which I worked on for the better part of a decade. Yeah, I was very lucky to be involved with that project. No kidding. I had no idea. Yep. And, um, yeah, I was, you know, doing, reading through the news, and, and I kind of always had kept an interest in what's going on with alternative currencies and with cryptography. Mm -hmm. And technology, internet, yeah. communications technology, which is what Bitcoin and cryptocurrency really is part of. It's part of this um, changes in terms of how we're communicating. Right, you know, right. Based on what we know about technology, how communication works. It began with uh, Claude Shannon, father of the information age. Hmm. He's the guy who put the bit in Bitcoin. He said, hey guys, maybe we should measure information. Gotcha. And he invented this idea of the bit, single unit of information. Hence the name bit. Yes. Interesting. And the first time I heard about it, I was um, kind of discounted. I was like, that sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> That's going to break right away. <laughs> right. And then uh, it was in the news again like six months later, and I was like, what? Yeah. It's still around? Like, huh. maybe I should take a look at this. I remember years ago you told all of your friends, including me, that, you know, you uh, you thought it'd be a good idea to invest a little bit of money in this thing called cryptocurrency, and I think we all kind of looked at you with three heads and was like, "Yeah, no, Luke, we're not going to give you our money." Yeah, um, I wasn't even asking for your money to be clear. No, you were. But <laughs> I think it was like you were way ahead of the curve back then. Well, I when was... you were onto something, and we should have known better. I mean, clearly, like, well, hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah, it uh, is. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I should have known better too, to be honest with you, but. Right. But yeah, I didn't have much luck, even though I told a lot of people to uh, invest in it. Yeah, so yeah. people have sent me uh, like notes, I sent emails, Facebook posts, they're like, hey, Luke, check this out. And it's like, I think Bitcoin looks pretty good at $20, guys. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, look at it now. I mean, what is it? It's trading at like $9,000 or something 9, like that. 9000 today, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So, uh, was Bitcoin a good investment for you? <laughs> well, certainly, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of them now. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of hard not to, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's not a, yeah. you know, when you don't know, and it goes up by, you know, you double your money. It's like you should probably sell hey, some, right? Exactly. I think if you're doubling your money, you're doing pretty good as an investor. Right? Yeah, you, you might as well take take your profits, as they say. Yeah. Although later you'll be kicking yourself. So I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious. Tell us a little bit more about your role with NASA. That's really neat that you've worked with NASA for for all those years and. I know yeah. your grandfather worked and helped develop some things at NASA, right? My was, was also involved with um, NASA mission. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hubble Telescope. Hubble Telescope. Wow, that's neat. Cool. Yeah, you know, he has a much more a more serious role, a uh, more lengthy story to tell. Right, uh, I'm my sure. My story's a little simpler. I was um, went to graduate school at University of New Hampshire. Yeah. And my advisor... Eberhard Milbius, a uh, German gentleman who was nice enough to get me on board this project. And I didn't really know what I was doing, but he was like, hey, we need some people on this. And I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Nice. And I got involved with designing a mass spectrometer mm -hmm. that flew. It was a very simple mission. Great mission to get involved with because it's one of the fastest and um, simplest of the NASA missions. It's right. small explorer is the class of mission. Gotcha. Price tag was less than a hundred million dollars, and um, 
Hmm. Relatively small satellite, but very focused science objective and totally yeah. new thing that hadn't been done before. That's awesome. And I was able to get involved with the design and the testing. We did testing in Switzerland in big vacuum chambers. So sort of start to finish that start before finish. you finish. That's yeah, really cool. It's still flying though. You know, sadly, still I'm, out not, there. In, I'm not really involved anymore. My, yeah. my postdoc finished. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm still following it. It's still a... Take a look if you're not familiar with an IBEX Interstellar Boundary Explorer. That's cool. Well, not everyone can say in this area, hey, I had a chance to work with NASA and develop, a, <laughs> you know, something cool. So, um, so I guess, um, what what made you want to invent your own cryptocurrency? It was mostly that I was wanted to learn more about it, how, yeah. how it worked. It's still you know, public system. Everything's open source. It's all open to see how it's going. There's nothing hidden at all about mm -hmm. it. And people were, one of the best ways to, to understand how it works is to get your hands into the code and be like, where can we make improvements? What's, mm -hmm. what's going on here? Right. And um, so that was part of the incentive was just that I was, I was really excited about not only like the implications technologically, but the political implications. And mm -hmm. I just want to know more. So after talking to you a little bit about it, um, you know, I understand that it's Woodcoin is the name of the cryptocurrency, Woodcoin, right? otherwise yeah. known as Log. Log, okay. Um, and it's a standalone cryptocurrency, meaning it doesn't need another cryptocurrency in order to work. Is that right? Exactly right, yes. That's, see, that to me is like, whoa, that's sort of really ahead of what, I mean, I, I don't know much about cryptocurrency, but I do know most cryptocurrency out there is like sort of reliant on another cryptocurrency to work. That's true, yeah. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. That seems pretty revolutionary. Um, well, the first ones weren't, I mean, the first altcoins, as they call them, as some people still call non-Bitcoin public coins, but altcoins. Altcoins. Old yeah. word. I feel like an old man in this space already. And, uh, <laughs> the, it's only been like less than a decade, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the, um, yeah, it was Namecoin was one of the first. Litecoin. Mm -hmm. There was something called Xcoin, which never took off. That was very early. Yeah, these were all standalone. Although Namecoin later in the game became merged mine, so it does became it's still standalone, but mostly it's mined with Bitcoin at the same time. Gotcha. And Litecoin, I've heard Litecoin of is standalone still around. Still around. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a great one. I like. I use it. It's cool. uh, cheap and it just works. That's the nice thing about these things. They just and so it. when you say <laughs> when you say that you use it, what do you use like a Litecoin or a Bitcoin for? Um, um, Use it to buy server time. I use it to buy um, mm -hmm. stuff on Overstock.com. I use it to yeah. pay people. Yeah. Um, I use it to hold money, just like I, in case I have some that I want to. Right. Like keep to save safe. some. Yeah. 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 It's funny. I had took a trip to California last uh, January, and I sent you that message of a bitcoin atm machine ah. and i was like wow that's that's pretty ahead of the curve you saw you know? it where was it no. it was in san diego county they had actual bitcoin atm machines nice. where you could use your bitcoin and take it out as cash and yep. work like a regular bank i'd imagine you know with your, um, yeah they're, they're really more a better name might be vending machine because atm machine. typically yeah. requires that you have an account right bitcoin there's no account it's like cash it's you just have it or right you don't. it's not an account so yeah, yeah. Uh, BTM machines yeah. will let you you know buy dollars or buy bitcoins. Um, so what what sort of like the, the vision for for Woodcoin in, in your mind? Like why you know obviously you, you, you created this thing. Like where where do you see it sort of being used in the platform later on? Well, uh, it's that's a a little lengthy question. I could get into it in depth, like. Right. Part one of that is just understanding that it's good to have more options. Like if yep. there was only Bitcoin, mm -hmm. then it would be too expensive to use. Right. It would be like a lot of fees, and it would be fragile. Someone yep. could could give like a denial, denial of service attack, uh -huh. make it hard to use. You'd be like, I need to yeah, I need to yeah. buy this house right now, and it's like the server's not responding. Gotcha. So if you have like more options. It just makes the whole thing more robust. Yeah, yeah. It, it even strengthens Bitcoin to have Bitcoin out there. Right. Because it's just gives people fallback. It's sort of like building your own portfolio, so to speak. Yeah, you know, well you have a yeah, you want diversification. Yeah. Yeah. And also it's just just um 
it's like a hydra. Like there's, you try to cut the head off of cryptocurrency, there's like all of these other heads growing. Yeah, yeah. So it's, and um, are you able like? Are, are people able to buy your cryptocurrency right now somewhere? Yep, yep. They one are. coin is cool. on a, a few exchanges. It's not uh, that easy if you're not familiar with using cryptocurrencies. Right. But uh, it's it's trades. It's uh, trades about five cents, I think, for five a cents. Log. <laughs> hey, I think if we all bought five cents worth of Bitcoin, we'd be in a pretty <laughs> good spot right now. And um, no, that's that's awesome. Is one thing that they always make sure uh, ask people to point out is that you can you can buy fractions of a coin. Right. Not obvious when you hear about this stuff, but it's yeah, true. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to buy a whole coin. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Buy like very small amounts. And then you recently have an Apple app for a wallet for for yes. with coin allergy. Is that right? Yep. There's cool. a there's a Apple Store has an app for a wallet. Nice. You can uh, it's developed in China. Nice. Through there, there's another one, another wallet coming soon. Yeah, which will handle handle log. And cool. there's Android apps. There's wallets for PC and for your Mac. So nice. That's awesome. If you want to get in, I feel like that's learn a, how this works. Why not try with Woodcoin? Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, at five <laughs> cents a share, it's like, what do you have to lose? You know? <laughs> I mean, that's like that's so great. Um, you know, I mean, in your opinion, is is cryptocurrency like? I know there's a lot of skepticism about like. You know, well, it's sort of risky. It's not, you know, it's not really, um, you know, federally regulated. And I mean, in your opinion, is cryptocurrency here to stay? It's definitely here to stay. That doesn't mean it's not risky in terms of I wouldn't advise anyone to put all their money into it. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it is a it moves with markets, and so it can move. It's, yeah. There's been some days that you know it dropped eighty percent Bitcoin. And, yeah, yeah. And certainly, it's over the long run, it's been hugely positive. But you cool. come in at, at with everything at the wrong time, so some caution is advised. If you're, it should be kind of obvious. Well, and that's back to <laughs> diversification. I mean, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's yes. cool. Yeah. Well, Luke, it's been a pleasure, man. Appreciate the the recap and the insight. Okay. And, well, let me, uh, something else though before you yeah, go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, about Vermont because. Um, Oh yeah, we didn't even get to, you, you have this great, uh, you have Vermont Secure Computing, right? Vermont Secure Computing is, is part of a platform for the, this came out of, yeah. but uh, I just think it's um, important. A lot of this um, people in the state have, have lost their property and mm -hmm. uh, it's part of a bigger picture of, of the um, issuance class, people printing dollars, we're accepting dollars for our labor and for our homes yeah and people are just printing them you know with the bank computers yeah just yeah issuing them in you know new york and then they come up here and buy all our land yeah and then bitcoin is, is a way maybe we can take back vermont you know a little bit yeah it's a people's coin it's no one is is privileged right it doesn't matter if the color of your skin yeah it doesn't matter how you were you know where you were born or how much money you have in the bank. How much money you have, what yeah. kind of passport you have. Right. It treats everybody equally. Yeah, yeah. And, and so that's going to be a big advantage over the long term if we can start moving to a system like this. Right. Stop giving our property away to counterfeiters. Yeah. No, and that's true. I mean, I think there's there's some obvious real real factual, you know, news about that. Mm -hmm. You know, where you can just, that's that's how, that's what's going on. Which yeah. Is really that's awful. Just, yeah. No, I feel, you know, hey, I have a little bit of cryptocurrency. I'm super thankful. And, you know, it's uh, it's fun to watch every day because every day, you know, it really doesn't it doesn't veer too far away. It's it's a lot like a secure stock. I mean, it's pretty ways. stable recently. Pretty right? stable, yeah. you know, which is cool. I mean, I'm hoping it yeah. goes a little unstable. Yeah, but I, I think it, is, it, it will. I, I think it, it's a yeah. question of time. And it's a, Yeah. It might take a long time now. Yeah. Right. Know, and... Well, yeah, you always, I mean, growing up with you, you always told us about this Bitcoin thing. And again, we, we all should have listened, but you were right on the money, man. So well, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. I, I yeah. think you're absolutely <laughs> on to something with your Bitcoin, and I'm, I'm excited uh, for you. It's fantastic, cool. man. I appreciate you taking time to uh, yeah. ask me about it. Anything else you want to say to the Woodstock community? Um, rage on. Rage and, on. And, uh, spin to win. Spin to win. I like it. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Jim. And he plays the organ, apparently.
Luke Saul in the element. Nice.